Okay, well, yeah. um, having said that, it seems to me there's a very fascinating range of work that we have here, and that um, each artist is kind of coming from somewhere different. Some people started as um, animation filmmakers, but other people have come straight uh, or from music performance, like um, like Peter and Christopher, um, or from drawing, like Daniela. And I get gather from computer technology with Marina. Was that we all know? Actually, from film and okay. installation. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so moving on from that, um, I know some of you have addressed this to some extent, but I wondered if I could ask you um, maybe about some of the kind of audience responses you've had to the pieces that you've shown. And I, uh, I know some of you actually get out there and talk to people as they're looking at your work, and that's kind of part of the process in a way. So um, maybe, I know, you're, several of you are nodding, so <laughs> Marina, would you like to kick off? Um. This, this was an interesting experience because uh, I had I had kind of high hopes for a, 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 a kind of a recognition response, and uh, most of the people who came to see the work, uh, you know, I, I had to stay on my piece for most of the night, the first night, and uh, I got a lot of compliments about how pretty it was, uh, and how did I make it? You know, sort of typical, but I mean, it was it was it was nice, but it was a bit deflating. Then um, the vice president of the hockey stadium came out, this kind of really cool woman, and she had given me permission to remove the jumpy castle that was in front of my piece and blocking part of the projection at dusk. It was supposed to be up till 9 p.m. And she was really cool and had given me permission earlier in the day. She came out and she said, so tell me about the piece. And uh, I kind of went into a, this, a speed version of the story I told you, the gulf and all these connections. She was like, huh. She's like, I'm really glad I got to talk to you. And you know, she's like, we have corn biodegradable beer cups. And I was like, well, you know, they're popped with corn in monocultures. I hate to be a bummer, but you know. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I saw her the next night, and she said, you know, I actually had this meeting with these energy people coincidentally today, and I really kind of put pressure on them to make some changes. So I felt like I don't make didactic work very deliberately. I really want the lore of cartoons, and in this case, I use the word quite politically to draw people in to make some further inquiries if they want. And I felt like that was kind of a big success story if, if there is any, because really it's about corporations changing as, as probably much more than whether I have a cloth bag or not. So that's kind of my community anecdote about this. Rose? Um, well, I think that the you know, there's, there's a couple of things. One is, um, I'm, I'm fascinated by what happens with this mix of people. It's almost like on the street, it's, a, it's an experience that happens that people remember. Like they've walked down that street a lot, but this has never happened. And they were there with someone else. And so it, it kind of, we, we, especially I think in, in the city, we, we walk on these, they're like migrations that we walk in kind of a numbed sort of way. Uh, and we tend to recognize only the sort of the time and the moment that we're in. And I don't know if that's really an American thing or that it's a young country and there's not a lot of old, but it's, I guess there's something to be said for knowing that we're part of this line that goes back. And the other thing, I guess, is is in making these, they're like, the pieces are like monuments to the unmemorable, um, that using the silhouette makes it less identifiable, so therefore it could be more people. And I think one of the best feedback I got from this, this woman who does volunteer work down in, this was down in Old Town, and she said, I, she said, you know, when people are down here on Skid Row and they die, there's nobody that comes and gets them or anything. They just call the city and they're taken away and there's no ceremony or whatever. And she said, and once a year, she said, people down here will gather and they will read the names of the people who died that year. And she said, that's what this piece reminds me of, that it's remembering, uh, remembering people who don't get statues. 
Jim. Yeah, as, as was mentioned or could have suggested, I think that uh, people are sometimes surprised at how little specific response artists often get to their, to their work. Um, I'm always very pleased when someone uh, says, um, comes up to me and says that, that they saw something uh, and experienced seeing something, discovering something that they hadn't seen before. And I think that's, I think that's my little uh, agenda. Um, I've, I've gotten the most response of any of my films to, or in my work, to a film called St. Helens Road, which isn't a, um, an installation. What it is is it's a, about a 15 minute, exceedingly slow move down a hunk of the highway out to where, where we live. It looks at just this ramshackle uh, uh, assemblage of, uh, of abandoned businesses, places where people live, uh, all kinds of um, evidence of uh, activities undertaken and, and, and abandoned. And it's a very basic place too. The, the uh, interstitial space is very, very small. People, people's um, property lines just stop because the whole area is so functional. It's industrial, you know. The the level of decoration there is extremely, uh, you know, it's like land without without an intentional aesthetic. So what is the aesthetic there? So at any rate, I, when I have shown that film, like when I show bunches of my work, sometimes when I start showing, I go, oh man, I'm showing this film of a bunch of buildings that they're going to watch for 12 minutes. This is. I really shouldn't have brought this, and it's the film that I get the strongest, the strongest response to. And I think one of the things that uh, artists can do uh, is to just help people slow down, create an environment where they can slow down, where they're encouraged to slow down, and get their metabolism going at such a rate that they can just look at what's in front of their face. And I think I appreciate it when I'm able to encourage that. I think it's, well, hey everybody. <laughs> it's kind of funny that you're, you talk about your pursuit being the attempt to slow people's metabolisms down to like watch your work, because I feel like Christopher and I kind of do the opposite. Um, and, and that to us is really satisfying. Like doing it sort of as like a head fake, like the actual like visual, the visual and musical structure is like this other thing, just sneak in what's really important to us. Um, so, I mean, I guess where we sort of started trying to figure out how people are reacting to our pieces is we talked to them after the show, and, and that was where we got most of our feedback. Um, and this was like really early in the in our show, and one of the first shows we showed animations, um, all of a sudden we were performing and we looked out over the whole audience and they were just totally catatonic. Everybody was just staring at us like, uh, and we were, at, that was pretty much the end of our project, then that was maybe like six years ago. And we were trying to figure out, we moved out to Portland, we were just like, what happened? Why, what happened? I guess we just don't make good work anymore. And we eventually we realized that's what people look like when they watch TV. And I think this is, I think it's been a sort of, it's been one of the biggest influences on, on us here. And I think it's really interesting to find ways to take, you know, an art form that a lot of us make, which is just making videos and figure out interesting ways to essentially change change the viewer's reaction to it and allow them to open up and like feel a little a little bit more like it's actually just a party I think that we're watching together. I think that's what something that they can get involved in on a literal level is exciting to us. Stanella, do you have any? I would say that uh, for me the most interesting part is uh, to, um, the, the transcendence between languages and uh, cultures. Yeah. So just to uh, communicate using um, or trying to use these universal uh, either gestures or mediums uh, to make to make a point. And uh, usually, I mean, people really re react to it very emotionally because um, without language, without you know communication, that's the only thing that they have, which is amazing to me. I mean, it's just a huge huge compliment, but uh, uh, that's basically all that they have left to react with because they are dealing with something that it's not usually their environment. So. Mm -hmm.